but to carry people's favor. He wanted people to get on his side. All right? Because his bigger plan was to stab his father in the back. All right? So, so he would give them counsel. He would tell them what they wanted to hear. He would get them on his side till eventually he caused, he caused an uproar in town where he, he, he ran his father out of town. <laughs> he ran his, the king is on the run. The king and, and his family are on the run. Has the king and his family on the run. Okay. Eventually, eventually, uh, the Bible says that David regroups. And the Bible says that David's men chases after Absalom. And while they're chasing Absalom, the Bible says Absalom being on his horse, he gets caught by a tree with his hair. Hair, his hair catches onto the tree. And Absalom is finally killed. All right? The Bible says that when David finds out that Absalom was dead, that he grieves for Absalom. He grieves for his sons, okay? And that caused some of David's men to get upset because his men said, here we are following you, supporting you. And this son has betrayed you and he's dead and you act like you care more about him than you do than you do us. So it caused it caused a little problem there. All right. But look at what we have. We have the first child dies because of David and Bathsheba. We have Ab we have Amnon who is dead because he raped his sister. We have Absalom who's dead because he betrays he betrays his father kills his brother, betrays his father, Absalom is now dead, okay? We see now David being, and, and we're going to get to the scripture, then we're going to close. We see now King David was a powerful leader. It is under David that the northern and southern kingdoms were united, okay? Now, it didn't last long, but at least they, they came together. They were a united kingdom after David, okay? David was a powerful leader. He was good-looking. The Bible talks about him being a good-looking man. He was intelligent. Now, King David was smart, okay? He was a legend in his time. The, the stories we see about David, uh, we see that he had some, some testimonies, about being delivered from enemies and how God gave him victory enemies, right? Uh, we, we see he was a legend that started out the killing of Goliath. You remember with the slingshot and the five smooth stones. Uh, we see that David, that, that alone made him a legend. And look at, but look at too, he says the same God that uh, gave me victory over the bear and the lion, I'm going to be able to handle this uncircumcised Philistine, okay? And he knocks the lion out. And, and David, the Bible says, he was a legend of his time. He was, he was a man's man. David was a man's man. And, 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 and to David was a lady's man, all right? Uh, he was a man's man, uh, but he was also a lady's man. And God said of him, God said of David, that he is a man after my own heart. That's what God says of David. We see 
He goes from being a boy shepherd to anointed king. He was anointed king. Now, he didn't see that kingship for, for years, okay? But he was anointed king. David is a military hero. He is a spiritual leader. He is a spiritual leader. We know that David loved God, okay? He is a gifted songwriter, okay? The Psalms are songs, okay? They are words that were sung, all right? Uh, that's why the book of Psalms can be called the hymn book of the Bible, okay? It's the hymn book of the Bible. They were words that were put to music, okay? They were words put to music. All right, he was king, killed Goliath, eluded Saul. Remember Saul? He followed Saul. All right, because Saul, God had determined that Saul would not be king any longer. David was selected uh, to lead after Saul. Saul then tries to kill David, and David has to run for his life. Uh, over 15 attempts Saul made on David's life, and David uh, was, uh, was able uh, to escape until Saul, too, was killed, okay? He led an army of 600 men. Uh, we, see, we see Bathsheba Gate, okay? We see Bathsheba Gate, all right? Uh, led a nation to be a world power. He overcame a his son died. When King David died, the weight of the nation fell on his son Solomon. Okay? I know it took me a while, but, but we're finally up to Solomon. The weight of the nation uh, falls on Solomon. Okay? The Bible says that Solomon now being the next leader, God asked him a question. <laughs> okay? And and here here it is. If God were to say to you today, ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. What if he asked you that today? What do you want? Whatever, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. What, what if God <laughs> asked you that question today? Now, now, that, that, I know there are a range of answers, okay? And, and probably first, at the, first on the list, at the top of the list, probably would be, Lord, I want to be rich. Give me some money. I want to be rich. Okay. That would probably be, probably be at the top of the list. What, what would you ask for? Okay. Would you ask for help? Some of us uh, would ask God, I, I want to be healed. I'm, I, I don't want to wake up with aches and pains. I want to be healed. Okay. Um, uh, I, I I, I, I wish I didn't have to keep going to all these doctor's visits. I want to be healed, okay? Some of us would pray for that, or we would be praying for the healing of a loved one. You know, my mother, I, I, yes, I would pray that my mother could walk. My mother wants to walk so bad, and, and, and I know she wants to, she's still serving the Lord, but I know she wants to get up, she wants to get up out of that bed. Okay, and she wants to walk without having any pain, any difficulty at all. I, I know that's what she wants. So, so we probably pray for help for ourselves, help for others, okay, help for others, all right. Uh, uh, we would probably be praying uh, for money, help. Uh, somebody would want a house or a mansion, okay, a house or a mansion, or maybe a dream car. Now, 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 those of you who know me know that um, I love cars. I just do. I, I love cars. Uh, ain't nothing like a, a good-looking vehicle. I 
nice cars, okay? And, and some of you know me, and I've said it. I've, I've said it, and I'll, I'll put it back out there. If I could afford to get a new car every single year, I would. If I could afford it, I can't. I can't afford it. Okay, I'm holding on to what I I got. Thank God. Uh, God gave me a car. I have a car. I, I like the car. Okay, um, but 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 if I could, I I I I I would buy a new car every year. Buy one, then see something else, uh, and get that. Or if you're that rich, you can get a couple cars, couldn't you? Well, y'all pray for y'all past. Y'all pray for me. Okay. <laughs> Um, some maybe some of you would would pray for superpowers. You know, I grew up, I I grew up with Spider Man and Superman and Batman. Well, Batman and Robin didn't have superpowers. Okay, he had the, he had the belt. Okay, he had the, <laughs> Batman had the belt. But Superman, underdog, and cartoon underdog. Okay, maybe you would ask for a superpower to be able to read people's thoughts. To read people's minds. And a flame. Remember flame? Uh, the guy that would turn into fire. Okay. Maybe you would ask for a super uh, a superpower. Okay. Uh, ask for whatever you want, Solomon, and I will give it to you. All right. I mean, that that is God talking to Solomon. Solomon now knows he's the chosen one to be the king, okay? They are in Jerusalem. He's at the tabernacle, okay? He's, he's going to build a, a, a house of worship for God. David could not do it, but Solomon would build God a temple, okay? They had the tabernacle, which was a portable tent where they worship. It, it moved from location to location, Okay, and Solomon is at the altar, and God asks Solomon, ask for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Some of y'all single, some of y'all be saying, well, Lord, I want a husband, okay, well, I, or I want a wife, okay, uh, 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 that might be in, in the prayer. Look, look, at, look, at, look at Solomon's response. I want you to look at verse 8, and we're going to go... Uh, through some of this, and then we're going to close in about five minutes, okay? We're going to go through some of this, and then we're going to close in about five minutes, all right? Look at Solomon's response, beginning at verse 8. First Chronicles, I through one through one. Now we we'll pick up at verse 8. Look at what Solomon says. Solomon says to God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David, my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. All right? Now, O Lord, let thy promise, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. God promised David that his throne would be established forever. David is, in, David is in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, okay? And everybody in that bloodline falls into the throne being established forever. Listen to what Solomon says. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. What does that sound like? That sounds like Solomon remembering the promise made to Abraham a long time ago when God promised Abraham, look at the stars in the sky, look at the sea, multiply your seed. And here Solomon is bringing all of that back. Thou has made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Verse 10, verse 10, verse 10. Give me now. This is what Solomon is praying for. I'm, I'm putting this in bold letters, okay? Those of you watching on Facebook, Live. I'm, I'm putting this in bold letters, okay? Listen to what 
Solomon prayed. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may that I may go out and come in before this people. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I might be able to conduct myself in a holy way before your people. When your people see me, they need to be reminded of you. They need to see you in me. And that's our prayer. What, what unbelievers and believers I don't need to see the people. I, I want to identify the God in the person. The God in the person. Help me, God, to conduct myself that I might go in right, come out the right way. Go in before your people and conduct myself in a right manner. For who can judge this thy people that is so great. Verse 11. Verse 11 is God's response to Solomon's heartfelt prayer. I don't have time to do it today, but next week we want to look at wisdom and knowledge. Today we want to deal with what what he asked for, next week we want to put some bones on the skin. We want to look at wisdom and knowledge, okay? Wisdom is knowledge guided by understanding. Wisdom is knowledge guided by understanding. That lets me know that you can have knowledge and still be an idiot. There is such a thing as a educated fool. You can have degrees <laughs> and still be and still be stupid. Okay? Devoid of common sense. Okay? Because wisdom is knowledge guided by understanding. I understand with the knowledge God has given me how to behave myself, how to act, how I'm supposed to conduct myself. And that takes wisdom. That, uh, I, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Wisdom is knowing, wisdom is knowing when to open your mouth and when to keep your mouth shut. Wisdom tells you there are times you need to talk. But wisdom also tells you there are times you need to be quiet. You have to understand the circumstance. You have to understand the situation that you're in. Listen to what the Lord said. And this is hard. Don't throw pearls before swine. That's, that's hard. And you and I both know that people who you can give great advice, you can share with them wisdom, you can share with them your experience, you can share with them your knowledge of scripture, and they will, they will hear you and then they will go out and still do something stupid. That's throwing pearls before swine. They're not ready to, they're not ready to receive it. And wisdom lets you know there are some people who are just not ready yet. No matter how much you talk, no matter how much you counsel, no matter how much you love, they just ain't ready yet. You ever met people like that? I, you know, I used to be that. that no, I used to be that person. My mother and father tried to tell me something for my own good. But I was stupid. 
I, I, I didn't understand their wisdom. <laughs> I didn't understand what they were trying to say to me. Okay? It's not till years later that now I look back at mama and daddy and I can see how much wisdom they had. Didn't have, listen, didn't have the best of education, but they had wisdom, knowledge guided by understanding. They understood circumstances. They understood there are times you do something and there are times you take your hands off something. Okay? Let me, let me close with this. You know, um, I have four children. And I love my children. Y'all have children. You love your children. You had to learn that at some point, you couldn't tell them what to do any longer. You just couldn't. That they, 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 they were set to do what they wanted to do. And even though you gave them great advice, that would have saved them a lot of heartache, would have saved them a lot of pain, they still did what they wanted to do. Wisdom sometimes says to parents, you got to take your hands off of them. No wonder the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart from it. Our job is to teach them. And after you have taught them, there's nothing else you can really do. You have to learn to let them go. Put them in God's hands and let them go. It comes back to where we started, full circle. Prayer changes things and prayer changes situations. But look, prayer changes you. Situation changes. <laughs> and sometimes uh, I, we need to pray for our own selves, okay? Until God brings for, with our outward circumstances, we need to ask God to change our in selves. All right. Well, we're gonna close right there. Close there. Uh, I pray that this was a blessing to you. Um, it was a blessing for me to share it with you. We're going to pick up with wisdom and knowledge next week, okay? And we're going to look at God's response to Solomon. We're going to see God's response to Solomon. I want you to write this verse down, Matthew 6 and 33, okay? Now, now that scripture came long after Solomon's prayer, okay? But we're going to look at what that had to do with Matthew 6 and 33, what God says to Solomon, his response. God's going to answer Solomon, okay? And we're going to take a look at it next week, all right? Are, are there any, any, any questions or comments about, about any of that information? Any questions, comments? All right. Well, um, we're praying for, uh, I did get a call from Sister Askew. I did get a call from Sister Jefferson. It was on her dad, okay? Uh, Brother Wilder, and we're praying for uh, the family. We're praying for uh, Sister Mary Wilder. And the family we want to keep all of them uh, lifted up uh, uh, to, in, in our prayers, okay? Uh, that God would so uh, take them through in a time such as this. I did talk to Sister Askew. Uh, uh, she was looking at having the funeral around uh, um, Tuesday or Wednesday. I told her the conference ends uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, so I probably, I probably couldn't. Uh, do the funeral on Wednesday. But when I find out information, of course, we will share that information with you all. All right? Um, if, the, if, if there are no other questions, if all hearts and minds are clear, pray for Sister Red again. Uh, she's um, 
and getting ready to hit the road, going to Charlotte uh, to uh, work for a couple of days, and then she'll be back. So we are praying that God would grant her journey mercies as she goes. Um, um, Sunday morning again uh, is right before conference, and from those who don't know in any church, after Sunday there are no pastors of any churches. Um, and we will find out uh, we'll find out appointments on Tuesday. Tuesday evening is when appoint, appointments will be given out. Um, I have not heard uh, contra or anything that says that I won't be back. Okay, it is my belief, it is my want to be back. Okay, me and Sister Red, we want to be back. Uh, so uh, that's what we're believing that God's going to do. All right? Uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, again, thank you so much for tuning in to uh, Facebook Live, and thank you so much uh, for uh, calling on the conference call. And at this time, I'm going to ask for a volunteer to close us out in prayer. Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Facebook Live, see you Sunday morning.